This is the target I used to measure the radius of the Earth. It comprised of alternating black and white panels designed to expand and contract as needed, able to fold down into a triangular shape that we would strap to the outside of our hiking packs and carry for long intervals in between use. It needed to be lightweight, sturdy, and visible at distance. For 112 days, we carried it as we walked, setting it up in fields and valleys, along highways, through city streets and in between bridges. We worked in the heat, the wind and the rain, grappling with the environment we encountered to map and measure the surface of our planet. My name is Sarah Morowitz, I am an artist, and I'm interested in what, how and why we measure. For four months last year, I walked across France and Spain staging a performance called Etalon, a 112-day, 2,100-kilometer expedition that roughly followed the meridian line that cuts through Paris. So, why would I do this? Believe it or not, I did it in order to make my own meter. The meter is a length we're all familiar with. It is a standard measure roughly the distance from here to here. The story of how it came to be that length is perhaps a little less well known, though. It is, in fact, a metric that came from the Earth itself. The original meter was defined by a pair of 18th century French astronomers who surveyed the land between Dunkirk and Barcelona in order to calculate the size of the Earth with certainty for the first time. From their data, the length of the original meter was set to be precisely one ten millionth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator. As an artist, I was fascinated by this story of how this length that relates to the size of my body was calibrated against the scale of our planet. I began to consider the meter differently, thinking about it not just as an everyday measuring tool, but as a physical and an emotional experience. For me, the meter became a place and an expanse. And it wasn't simply enough to know how the meter was made. I wanted to somehow feel it, too. So I chose to retrace the journey that defined it, to walk and measure the distance between Dunkirk and Barcelona with the aim of creating a new metric that was decidedly my own. The work began on a beach in Dunkirk. I remember standing there looking out at the North Sea, focusing on the point where the sky met the ocean. I had a pack on my back and boots on my feet, and everything you might expect from undertaking a long-distance trek. I had a couple of other things that only an artist would consider, too. A pair of tripods, a collapsible target, a GPS receiver and a laser rangefinder. Everything I would need to measure the size of the Earth. This made my pack heavy and made me, if I'm honest, pretty terrified. I had never done anything like this before. I had no idea what to expect. But I had an incredible team of collaborators to rely on, an amazing group of female artists and creatives who would be joining me en route, as well as my husband, who would walk the first week with me from Dunkirk. The plan of the project was fairly straightforward. Each week, I would be joined by a new partner and would walk around 100 kilometers. In practice, this meant walking between 15 and 35 kilometers per day, making our way from town to town through the landscape. We had no established route to follow, just a network of small roads, highways and hiking trails that lay in close proximity to the meridian. We would stitch our route together as we went, walking between forest and farmland, urban and industrial spaces. We walked through fields, along canals, and over mountain passes. It was important for me to understand how this stretch of land related to the meter and experience in both physical and emotional terms. I wanted to know what it's like to measure and be measured, to witness firsthand the rawness and uncertainty of marking oneself against the earth. The act of measuring was a daily ritual that gave us purpose as we walked. We would measure the distance between two points on the Earth's surface and triangulate our position using GPS. This data was then filtered through an algorithm, solving equations to estimate the Earth's size. With each experiment, we learned the shape of the Earth with greater precision, and the length of my meter became more definitive. 
I often worry that the language and action of science feels both abstract and inaccessible. And for me as an artist, I use performance as a way of working through ideas physically to communicate their impact. With each experiment, I wanted our bodies to become apparatus and for us to be observers in the field. The process of walking was difficult. There is no denying this. Ultimately, I would need to resole my boots, not once, but twice. It made every part of my body hurt, and I often found myself suspended between states. I would drift out into the landscape and become absorbed in the minute detail of things. And then I would return inward to how my body felt, how everything seemed to ache and stiffen, and then further still, to focus in on all my fears and doubts. Each day out on the road, I seemed to carry more than the weight of my pack, and sometimes the emotions and pressures of the project would get the better of me. I worried about letting my companions down, letting myself down, and I think most of all, worried about failing the idea of the work itself. There were times when I was utterly depleted, and there were days where I struggled to walk through the kilometers that lay ahead. But then I just walked and kept walking. Somehow my body learned to lean into the action I demanded of it and adapted. For this, I owe a great deal to the women that accompanied me. It is impossible to explain all that they contributed or to define the bonds that form through such experiences. Simply put, I could not have done it without them. We are, I think, like family now, and my memories of the project are bound to each of them. Ultimately, Edelon became a study of space, the places I visited and the experience of walking through them. In our lives, we're often propelled through the landscape at tremendous speed, and I feel that one environment tends to blur into the next. I've never been comfortable with this erasure, and for me, walking was an opportunity to counter its effects. I feel there is so much to be learned through the simple act of walking the earth. By experiencing the world slowly, you are given time to see things as they are and to consider each in detail. You can come to see the transition between city, town and field and see how one terrain slowly folds into another. By committing to walk through the landscape, you commit to experience every aspect of it. There are no skipping sections that you would rather not see or that are perhaps difficult to traverse. You must experience everything, and in doing so, bear witness to a cross-section, a snapshot of a place as it is in the moment you pass through it. The end arrived upon me suddenly, even though I'd been walking towards it all along. There had been markers, of course, crossing the border between France and Spain, walking 1,000, then 2,000 kilometers. But I don't think it ever truly occurred to me that I would actually reach Barcelona. We arrived on a Saturday. It was one of only four occasions in the project where I walked in the rain. It made the pavements glisten and the buildings appear flat, almost two-dimensional. I don't think I realized how long I had been outside city spaces, how the congestion of traffic and pedestrians would feel disorienting and unreal. I don't know how to explain the emotion of that moment, how it felt to put my pack down one last time, to dive fully dressed into the ocean. I felt euphoria and exhaustion, a sense of pride and an inescapable melancholy for everything the project was and was not. This was its end, and this is what the end felt like. I set off to walk from Dunkirk to Barcelona in pursuit of an idea, to chart the relationship between the earth and the meter, and to understand how this length that rests so neatly in my hands could be bound to the arc of our planet. I ended up measuring far more than this. Through my survey of place came a calibration of self. The redefinition of the meter brought with it a redefinition of me, and I came to understand just how much can be accomplished if you're willing to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I have been changed by the act, and for me, of course, the meter is now so much more than the distance from here to here. 
think the very idea of measuring speaks to our collective investment in systems of comparison, of judgment and of subscribing value. I believe we consider our world in fundamentally relative terms, that we measure only by measuring against. The work now sits in a state of transition. From physical act, it must now transform into an exhibition, a publication, and an archive and a new metric length. I want to tell the stories that are bound up in the creation of my new meter, of bodies traversing time and distance, of long, quiet hours out on the road, of conversations and collective actions, of what it is like to walk out into the unknown, where you must ask yourself unambiguously, do I measure up? Thank you.